Hallelujah. Praise God. He's so good. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Amen. And I was thinking about this. When, you, when someone says, how are you? And then most people just say, I am good. Because they don't want to say either say their problems or the other person doesn't care. But when you say, I am good. If, you can't say that because where is God? Christ in me, the hope of glory. I mean, Christ is in you, and the Bible says, Odula ya kitov, God is good. So if Christ is good and He's in you, then you are good. Amen. You are good. You're always good. No matter what circumstances there is, you are good because Christ is in you and He is good. And Christ isn't just in you, He's upon you. Amen. Christ is in you, He's upon you, and you are in Christ. And what does that mean? It means Christ is before you, Christ is behind you, Christ is to your right, Christ is to your left, Christ is above you, He's beneath you, He's all around you because you're in Christ. And Christ is in you. So, God is good, so goodness is in you, goodness is above you, beneath you, to your right, left, everywhere around you and upon you, so you are good. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And the same way you can take it for the song, which says, Waymaker. The Waymaker is in you. The Waymaker is upon you. The Waymaker is before you and uh, behind you, above you, beneath you. All around you is the Waymaker. The light in the darkness. The Promise Keeper. The Promise Keeper is in you. The Promise Keeper is upon you. The Promise Keeper is to your right, to your left, before you, behind you, above you, beneath you, all around you. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We will, that's not for tonight. We'll speak on that another week. Okay. Praise God. Today I want to talk about protected by God every day. Do you need to know you're protected by God every day? Every day. Say every day. Amen. Every day you are protected by God. So I don't know why everyone's not protected. Because if everyone was protected, there will be every Christian will have divine protection. Okay? But... The Bible says, faith pleases God. So you need to not take God's protection for granted. Amen. You don't take God's protection for granted. You need to appropriate and receive His protection. Amen. And today we're going to talk about how you, every day, you can be protected by God because you are receiving His protection every day. Amen. So last week I talked about... Um, to, that God marks us. God has marked us. Amen. And in Revelation, it talks about the mark of the beast or the Antichrist and the mark of God or the seal of God. The mark of God is also called the seal of God. And I'm not going to get into that because that was most of my sermon last week. So you guys can go watch it. But anyway, the mark, the seal of God, God has already placed on you if you are a born again believer. What does it mean to be born again? It means that you believe Jesus rose from the grave. And then the Holy Spirit comes and indwells you. There's a wow of water, a wow of the Holy Spirit inside of you. When you are born again, and what happens? The Bible says you've been sealed, marked by God. You've been sealed, marked by God, and the Holy Spirit is on you <coughs> as a guarantee. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then what's amazing about this word for mark, mark means, uh, the, the root word for mark means to be, have an edge of protection around you. It means to have a wall around your protection. And the word for seal, also the same. The word for seal means to have a wall around you. Hallelujah. So when the Bible says He's put a mark and a seal upon you, He says, I've put a hedge of protection around you. I've put a wall of protection, of divine protection around you. Hallelujah. A defending wall. And what's amazing is, how, how does this mark look? Well, one of the, you could say a sign of how it looks, is the, <coughs> is the cross. So the cross is a sign. Okay? The cross is a sign. And the root word for cross, sign, means to be set. It means to stand, to stand still. So how, how can you be set? How can you stand still and stand in today's world and be protected on every side through the cross? Through the cross of Christ. 
Hallelujah. You guys following so far? So God's put a mark and a seal on you, so you have divine protection, so that you can have divine protection. So the same, you can say, through God's mark, sign, His seal, I was protected. I have protection. But then why isn't everyone protected? The same way you can say, by His stripes, I was healed. So you need to appropriate that healing. You need to receive that healing. The same way, by His mark, His seal, I was protected. I am protected. God has protected me. But you need to appropriate, receive that protection every day. The same way you receive that healing every day, through the communion. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. So in Isaiah 4 verse 6 it says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now what makes this so scary is it doesn't say um, the other people or the world is destroyed. It says my people. My people. So most Christians don't appropriate or receive what God has already given. Amen. They don't appropriate what God has already given. So you need to receive it. You need to appropriate it. But how can you appropriate or receive it if you don't know about it? You need to have the knowledge about what God has already done. The same way if you don't know about the Holy Communion, you won't be partaking of the Holy Communion. If you don't know... so The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So if you don't know the Word of God, then you don't have faith. But how will you hear the Word of God? The Bible says if you don't listen to a preacher. So you need to also come to church and hear what the Word of God says. Amen. And then you'll know and you won't lack. And the Bible says when you, when you hear the preaching of the Word of righteousness by faith, you, will lack. you won't lack anything. You won't fear, you won't be discouraged, and you won't lack. Amen. Hallelujah. That you know you have the righteousness of God in Christ. So what's the knowledge I want to look at? The Bible says God has anointed us. Amen. He's anointed us. And then He's marked us. And because He's marked us, we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now how do you appropriate that? How do you receive that? Through taking, or anointing yourself with the anointing oil. Amen. Anointing yourself with the anointing oil. So God has provided protection. And He has provided protection so that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And then, every, any weapon that is formed against you, God has provided you with such protection that that weapon that is formed against you will have a 700% counterattack. 700% counterattack. So even if you receive an injury, even if so we, we want divine protection that no weapon even comes against us. But the Bible says that there will be weapons that comes against you. But when that weapon comes, it won't be effective. But even that little bit that it does cause injury, maybe, there will be a 700% counterattack. So that means if you have received injury in your health, you have 700% more health. You have 700% more healing. If you've received Someone has stolen something from you. You have 700% restoration. So if they stole $100, you're going to receive $700. Oh, I don't know why I use dollars, but rands. 100 rand. You have received 700 rand back. So that means actually the more they steal, the more you will receive back. But why, why can we have an assurance? Because God is the one who is restoring Amen. It's like an insurance company that you know will always pay back for the damages. You can always claim back and God is our assurance. And He says that when something is stolen, when some face any damages, any injury, I will give 700% back. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And where do you anoint? The best place to anoint is to anoint on your well, the Bible talks about anointing on the forehead. So there's something about the forehead where angels and the spiritual world can see those who are marked on their foreheads. So the way you can do it is to take the anointing oil and make a cross on your forehead. 
Very practical. Amen. Because you're looking to the cross. The cross is the mark. The cross is the sign. When you make a cross, you're looking to Jesus expectantly. Amen. As your refuge. Because God alone is your refuge. God alone is your, your, your protection. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And then, no matter what happens, even so, if you get a weapon formed against you and there's attack in your health, finances, um, whatever, family, whatever is attacked, okay, you can name whatever, even if it's because of something you've done, okay, whatever is attacked, you can know that I keep on anointing myself, I keep on anointing, and then God will give a 700% counter attack, restoration, healing, deliverance protection. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Say keep on anointing. Say keep on anointing. Hallelujah. And what does that mean? You're staying in faith. Amen. You're staying in faith. Because what's faith? Faith is a positive response to what God has already done. So you believe that God has marked you, that God has anointed you, that God has um, sealed you with the Holy Spirit. And when you anoint yourself, you are responding to what God has already done, already given. Amen. Amen. So you're staying in faith. So it doesn't mean you have, you don't have your own insurance company that you um, get to insure you or you take, don't take medicine. You, know, you can take medicine, you can have an insurance company, but stay in faith. Amen. Stay in faith. Hallelujah. So let's take a look at the word for oil in Hebrew, it's shemen. Say shemen. So I've preached probably around 16 sermons on shemen already. But those of you who don't remember those 16 sermons, here is shemen. Okay? Oil shemen. And shemen is spelled shin, mem, nun. Say shin. Shin, that's how shin looks. Okay? And mem. Say mem. Mem, that's how mem looks. Mem means water. Okay? And here you have noon. Noon means seed. Okay, well done, you guys said noon. So it's shin, mem, noon. That's oil, shemen. So this is what we're going to use to see in which verses this word appears, oil appears. Okay, hallelujah. Praise God. Say, I am anointed. I am anointed. Hallelujah. So let's take a look at someone in the Bible who was anointed. In 1 Samuel 16 verse 12, it says, So ye, Samuel, no, this is Samuel, not me, eh? but someone else, another Samuel. So Samuel sent and brought David in. Now he was ruddy, with bright eyes and good looking. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. It also shows you how you need to be... Oh, but I must add my own stuff. But Samuel was led by the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because first, Samuel said, No, this first brother, no, he has to be anointed by the Lord. And then God said, No, not him. Not him. So it also shows you always need to be listening to that peace. That intuition that God has given you. Hallelujah. And then to move with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't drive a parked car. You need to flow. So you need to see the sons. No, it's not him. It's not him. It's not him until there's a peace. This is the one. So you don't stop by the first, the first uh, uh, option you get or the first opportunity you get. You don't just take it if there isn't a peace. You wait until the peace comes. Even if this one says, no, you only have today to sign this. You need to give in the money now. No, if there's no peace. Sorry, a better opportunity will come. Amen. So and the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is the one. Verse 13. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. Now notice, how did Samuel anoint him? And also the oil is shemen. Say shemen again. Shemen. Shin mem nun. Now, then Samuel took, what did he take? The alpha and the omega, the aleph tav. Now tav means sign, means mark. Okay? If you write Tav by itself, it means Mark. So Jesus is, the, and, and Aleph means ox. So Jesus is the ox slain on the cross. Amen. The servant. Hallelujah. 
Now he took the Alpha and Omega horn. Now how do you get a horn? How do you get a ram's horn? You need to kill the ram. A ram needs to die. There needs to be a death. So Sam, uh, Samuel uses a death, uses uh, an animal that was killed to anoint David. So the same way, how do we anoint? Why can we anoint one another? Because of a death. Because Jesus died. The Alpha and Omega died for us. Then we can anoint. And that shows you the difference between David and Saul. Saul was anointed with a vial. With a vial. Not with a, with a horn. So there was no death when Saul was anointed. And a vial represents the wrath of God poured out. And when, da- when Saul ruled, the Bible says he ruled with fear. The people feared him. While when David ruled, the, the, the depressed and the uh, distressed and those who were in debt came to him. They didn't fear him. Amen. So the same way Jesus says, I'll not be angry with you. Amen. There's no wrath to, uh, from Jesus towards his people. Amen. But what does the devil do? He's a roaring lion. He says, God is angry with you. God, he says, no, God shows wrath towards you. No, we are not anointed with a vial. We are anointed with a horn. There was a death. Amen. So, he took the horn of oil and anointed him. Now, notice also, who's the one anointing? It's the Alpha and Omega. Or you can say the one who's anointed is the Alpha and Omega. In the midst of his brothers. And that's the same way Jesus was anointed in the midst of his brothers. Amen. He was anointed with the oil of gladness. More than all his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord. Say the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel arose and went to Ramah. And Ramah means hill or high place. And then the whole verse ends with a Samech. You see Samech? Now I've talked about Samech a few times, but Samech means a hedge of protection. So now let's follow the order. Jesus died, okay, there was a death, so now we can anoint. So there's an anointing that takes place. Now notice the one who anointed is set on a high hill, on a high place. And there's protection. So when you anoint others, when you anoint others and you anoint yourself, you are set on a high place. You are protected. There's a hedge of protection around you. Amen. So there's a connection between, like we said, the word mark means to have a hedge of protection. So there's a connection between anointing and protection. A hedge of protection being placed on a high place. Being placed on a hill. Hallelujah. Amen. You guys following? And then what does the Bible say also? He was anointed, then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. So the Spirit follows the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says we've been marked and, and, and been anointed and then been sealed with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's take a look at the verse or the chapter that everyone uses to talk about protection. Okay? And we'll see how when you anoint yourself, then you are appropriating this protection. Amen. In Psalms 91 verse 1 it says, He who dwells, and this word for dwells means to sit. Amen. He who sits in the secret place. Now who's the secret place? This is also another sermon, but the secret place is Christ. Christ is the secret place. And where are we? We are in Christ. Like I said in the beginning, we are in Christ. So that's the first thing you need to have in order to have this divine protection. You need to be in Christ. So as a born-again believer, you are in Christ. And then, you are in Christ, but then, because you appropriate it, you receive all the benefits. So it says, he who dwells, sits. So he who is in Christ. But then, in verse 9, it says, because you have. So you are in Christ, but then because you have appropriated, you receive all the benefits. So he who sits in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord. So this is something you need to say. You can say it also when you anoint yourself. You say, 
God, Lord Jesus, You are my refuge. You alone are my refuge and my fortress. My God, in You I will trust. Amen. And what's amazing, like we said, what happened to David, or what happened to Samuel when he anointed? He was, he went to a high place. This place for fortress is the home of an eagle. The Bible also calls it the home of an eagle. It's a high place. Amen. And where is Jesus? We are in Christ. He's seated at the right hand of the Father. He's on the high cliff, on the high hill. Amen. The stone that Moses sp- needed to speak to. So the stone that, or, the, or the rock that Moses needed to speak to was a high cliff. Amen. A high hill. The home of an eagle. Amen. Hallelujah. Surely, say surely, not maybe, it's not, uh, may, like, not like Job said, okay, but I'm not going to talk about Job, we talked about him last week, okay, you guys can watch it, but Job said maybe, uh, miskin in Afrikaans, miskin, but not miskin, it's surely, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence, amen. Verse 4, he shall cover you with his feathers. And under his wings you shall take refuge. Now this word for refuge again is the home of an eagle. High cliff. Also the Ark of the Covenant has the cherubim. Those wings of the cherubim. That's where we are. We are under the the shelter of his wings. We are in the secret place. Amen. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Amen. Then verse 5 talks about how we have 24 hours, 7 days a week protection. 24 hours a day. It says, You shall not be afraid of a terror by night. So night time. You shall nor the arrow that flies by day. So you are covered and protected with divine protection at night and during the day. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Now this darkness, and it says pestilence, so it's a pest which you cannot see. And where is darkness? In your body. I mean, you cannot see inside your body. Your body is dark. Okay? But this pest, even if this cancer or this growth or this virus or bacteria is in your body, you don't have to fear it. Nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Let's say this one together. Verse 7. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand but it shall not come near you. So, right hand, it's close by, but you can see, even if there's 10,000 falling here, or a 1,000 this side, it will not come near you. Amen. That's a hedge of protection. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Verse 9, because you have made, now here, so you have to be in Christ, born again, believe Jesus rose from the dead, and you have the Holy Spirit in you. Because of that, you in Christ. Then, because you have, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. Now, how do you make the Lord your refuge? How do you make the Lord your dwelling place? Shemen oil appears in this verse. Now, I did use this word, verse, and I mentioned this a few weeks back, um, um, in the beginning of the year. But I must say, that the first time the Holy Spirit reminded me that uh, Joseph Prince preached on this verse and he said oil was in it. But then the Holy Spirit reminded me, so that's where I went and looked for it. But all the other times when I used the crustics, that's where the Holy Spirit told me, look at this verse, look at that verse. So this is the only verse that I got from someone else, but the Holy Spirit still reminded me. So let's show them. Okay, yeah, so let's first talk about acrostics. Those of you who haven't listened to any of my other sermons, acrostics is known as Bible codes. Okay? And it means equal distance letter sequencing. So that's why we talked about Shemen. Shemen is spelled Shin, Mem, Nun. Okay? So now in this verse, when we see Shin and then an equal distance of letters in between, to before the next letter, and an equal distance of letters before the next letter, it spells out the word. Okay? Then you know that word is written there. Okay? So let's see if we can find Shemen in Psalms 91 verse 9. So here you have Shin. Okay? Then 1, 2, 
You have Mem. And one, two, Nun. Shemen. Hallelujah. So how do you make the Lord your refuge and your dwelling place? Through the anointing oil. Through saying, Lord God, you have protected me. You have marked me and anointed me. So I am acting in faith. I'm standing in faith. I'm staying in faith. And when you anoint yourself. Amen. So this is the only time where the Lord told me and reminded me someone else uh, said this. But the rest, and when I preached, gave and many before, have come directly from the Holy Spirit. So now let's take a look at verse 10. So it says, Now because... You are appropriating His protection. Because you are saying, Lord, you have protected me. What happens? No evil shall be for you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Verse 11, For He shall give His angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. And we're also going to be mentioning, if it's time, because I'm taking a long time now, the angels. And how the angels counterattack the enemy. For He shall give His angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And angels aren't just little people. They are big, mighty angels. One angel killed one time. can't remember the exact number. But it was like 1,080. It was like 35,000. It was a lot of men. But he killed one angel. Killed many people. And verse 12, In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Verse 13, You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Verse 14, Because he has set his love upon me. Why do we say the root word for cross is? Set, to stand, to stand still. So what are you doing each time when you mark yourself, or each time when you anoint yourself? You are setting, you are setting the cross. Amen. You are setting the cross. So because He has set His love upon me. Amen. Amen. Therefore I will deliver Him. I will set Him on high. And what did we say? Samuel anointed David. And then what happens? He was set on high. Amen. So because you are anointing, you are set on high. Amen. Because He has known my name. And what did we say? The cross is Alpha and Omega, Aleph Tav. That's the name of Jesus, is His signature. Because you are making the cross or using the anointing oil, you know Jesus' name. You know Abba. Amen. Verse 15, He shall call upon me and I will answer Him. I will be with Him in trouble. I will deliver Him and honor Him. With long life I will satisfy Him. And show him my salvation. Salvation is Yeshua. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is complete protection. Complete protection. Now how do you appropriate this complete protection? Through anointing yourself. Applying the anointing oil. Amen. And where do you apply it? Or mark it? On your foreheads. So let's take a look. You mark on the foreheads. Ezekiel 9 verse 3 says, Now the glory of the God of Israel... Now the glory of the God of Israel had gone up from the cherub, where it had been, to the threshold of the temple. And he called to the man clothed with linen, who had the righteous inkhorn at his side. It's also interesting, inkhorn. Okay? That's an ink vial. It was an inkhorn. Okay? Then verse 4, And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city. So this is before destruction is going to happen, okay? Before a great attack is going to come on the city. And those who are marked will be protected, okay? And the Lord said to him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and put a mark. Say mark. Now this mark is the word tav. It's just tav. Alpha, it's the alef tav. It's tav. That's how you spell tav when you write it out. Tav. It's a, it's a cross and a nail. Okay? A cross and a nail. It means cross. Now, put a cross. You could say, put a cross or a mark on the foreheads of the men who sigh and cry over all the inhabitants that are, that, all the abominations that are done within it. Now, oil is written here. Oil is written here for the men, foreheads of the men who sigh. Shemen oil is written there. So the mark 
is also applying the anointing oil. So the cross and you apply the anointing oil. Let's quickly take a look at the anointing oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Next one. There. So Ezekiel 9 verse 4. Shemen oil. So those who on their foreheads, those who cry and sigh. Shin. One space in between. Mem. One space in between. Nun. Shemen. Amen. So the oil was placed on through the mark on the foreheads of those who cried and sighed over the abominations. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's take a look at 2 Timothy 2 verse 19. It says, Nevertheless, Nevertheless, say nevertheless. nevertheless. So it means no matter what. Okay, no matter what happens, no matter which army comes against you, no matter what attack comes against you, no matter what disease, lack, no matter what comes against you, what does it say? The solid foundation. Wow, there's a solid foundation of God stands. And why did we say the root word for crosses? Stand, sit, stand still. So the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. So you have the setting and the seal. Okay? The cross and the seal. The Lord knows those who are His. The Lord knows those who are His. So you're saying, Lord, You know me. You know I am Yours. You will protect me. You have set me aside. Amen. And I believe it. So I'm acting in faith and anointing myself. Amen. I'm anointing myself. Hallelujah. Then it says, And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Amen. Because why? Your sins have been forgiven. All your sins have been forgiven. Amen. So what does this also say? It says the spiritual world sees those who have been marked. Amen. It sees those who are anointed. So the angels, the demons... All the, all the, um, the spiritual uh, creatures and uh, the Himmel Saviyasin sees those who have been marked. Amen. Because they're intelligent. And I mean, even in Job, the devil could see that Job was marked. And he couldn't do anything to Job. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. It says, For all the promises of God in Christ are yes and in Him. Amen. To the glory of God through us. Amen. All the promises of Christ in, in... All the promises of God in Christ is yes and amen. Now verse 21 says now. So right now. Right now. Every day. Right now you can anoint yourself. It says now. He who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. What is the root word for cross? Establish, stand, set. So He who establishes us and has anointed us. So you can see the, the progression here. You are established through the mark, through the cross. Then you anoint. Who also has sealed, marked us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. And notice this is all in the past tense. He has. He has given. Amen. Now, how do you appropriate all of this? Verse 24. For by faith you stand. By faith you stand. Amen. And faith is what? A positive response to what God has done. So God has sealed you. He has marked you. He has given the Spirit. Then you respond positively through anointing yourself with the oil. So you say, I believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In Him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, so having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of His glory. Amen. Okay, so I think you guys are getting tired, so I'm not going to get through the whole sermon. I'm going to stop on page 3. Okay, but how many times a day, or how many times in a year, or how many times in a month do you anoint yourself? 
It's in, uh, let me show you through a verse how the Bible says you anoint yourself daily. You anoint yourself daily. So let's take a look. So how often do you anoint yourself? Let's take a look at 2 Samuel 2 verse 31. So the Holy Spirit showed me this one and it says, But the servants of David had struck down of the Benjamin and Asher's men 360 men who died. So of Benjamin and Abner's men, 360 men who died. Now in the Bible, 300, go down. So in the Bible, a year is 360 days, not 365 days. So what is it saying? The anointing oil is striking down the enemy for every day of the year. You anoint yourself every day. So there are 360 days in terms of the Bible. Okay, every day you anoint yourself. And let's go up again. Go up again, please. So it says here, 360 men who died. In verse 360 men who died is written, Shemen, oil. Okay, let me show you. Go to the, the, the acrostic, please. The acrostic, yeah. Okay, so 2 Samuel 2 verse 31. So here you have Shin. Guys, see Shin, you still remember how it's written? Shin, Mem, Nun. You have Shin, one, two, three, four, Mem. Okay, say Mem. One, two, three, four, Nun. You have 360, you have Shemen written. So every day, every day of the year, you anoint yourself. And then what happens? The enemies are killed. The enemies are destroyed. Amen. The enemies are killed. The enemies are destroyed. The next one, please. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you anoint yourself every day. Hallelujah. Now, what's amazing is, how many times a day, or how, many, how, how regularly does the Bible say, you mark yourself, you take up the cross. Jesus says daily. Now in Mark 16, Mark, uh, in Matthew 16, Mark 8, and Luke 9, the Bible says so three times. It says you need to take up your cross. In Luke it says daily. And when he had called, and when he had called the people, then said Jesus, and he said to all and unto his disciples also, so he said it to everyone. He said it to the people, he said it to all, he said it to his disciples. So he said it to everyone. If any, so what's any? Whomsoever, whosoever. So if any will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. And what's a cross? A mark. A cross is a mark. Take up his cross daily and follow me. So how did we say? How, you, how do you get established? How are you set? How do you stand? Prove a cross. Okay? Prove a cross. And what do you, how do you represent that? You anoint yourself. You anoint yourself through the cross and you do it daily. Amen. Hallelujah. And how do you do this? Jesus says, take up His cross mark daily. So you anoint yourself daily and then follow me. How do you follow Christ? Not like Peter who says, you boast in the love, your love of God. You follow Jesus like John. John said, I am the disciple whom Jesus loved. And then in the last chapter of John, the Bible says, the disciple, whom Jesus, the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, following Jesus. So when you know and believe, I am the disciple whom Jesus loves. I am the disciple whom Jesus loves. What happens? You will follow. You will follow Jesus. Amen. And like Caleb, what did Caleb do? Caleb said, God delights in me. Amen. God delights in me. God is with me. And the enemies are my bread. Amen. And what happens? The Bible says he followed God wholeheartedly. He wholly followed the Lord. And it says it like five or uh, many times. It says Caleb wholly followed the Lord. But why? Because he believed that God delighted in him, was with him, and that the enemies were their bread. That God was going to deliver the enemies into their hands. And why did we just say all the enemies are destroyed through the anointing oil? Amen. Hallelujah. What's amazing is, like here it says, daily all the enemies are destroyed. Amen. But the tithe destroys all the enemies monthly. Because I'll show you a verse, maybe in the future, where it says that all the enemies are crushed 
shattered into pieces through the tithe. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's, I didn't, I'm not even halfway, so let's stop there. Okay. Praise God. Amen. So daily anoint yourself with the anointing oil as a positive response to the fact that God has marked you. He has protected you. Amen. You are protected. Amen. With His divine protection. Like we read in Psalms 91. So if you, if you have time, you can read Psalms 91 and declare it and then anoint yourself. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's, no, we don't have... An, an, uh, uh, because I wanted to actually finish it. But let's stop there. I think the people have heard enough. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So we can have a part two and a part three. <laughs> awesome. Dirk, can you talk to me? Mensen for my sin. Hallelujah. So everyone, just lift your hands up or put your hands in front of you and say, Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have anointed me, that you have protected me. Like Psalms 91 says, That a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, it will not come near me. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is my refuge. He alone is my refuge and my dwelling place. Praise God.